Get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. You fucking crunch berry, you motherfucker. Get the fuck out of here. What up, what up, it's your girl Joe Crisp. It is uh, Wednesday morning, uh, 8.30, going to meet Steve Weatherford right now. <sighs> Steve's an absolute savage. I don't know if I can keep up with him in the gym, he's such a savage. I'm gonna have to sedate him somehow, some way. Steve's coming to pick us up at the office. We're gonna go to Planet Fitness. Why Planet Fitness? Well, Steve was banned from Planet Fitness, all Planet Fitness, worldwide, because he makes too many noises in the gym. <laughs> To combat this uh, exilation, Weatherford went to Party City, got a disguise, and we're gonna sneak past the barista up front, swiping the cards. Is that a barista? We're gonna try and work out and not get kicked out. Oh. Your unwarranted challenge is accepted, Planet Fitness. Steve-o. Mustache. Yeah, definitely need a mustache. Steve-o. Let's go get our swole on. Let's do it. Let's do it. You got Hispanic stuff too? All right. I'm going to need a stash. A spread of oh, mustaches. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, this is me, man. <laughs> Woo! That's the winner. Dude. <laughs> that is a winner. Steve, what's the deal? You got... You got kicked out of this place? Okay, so about one year ago, I was in Chicago. Long story short, I'm in there for about 35 minutes into a 60 minute workout, and the manager comes up to me and I'd like, like a douchebag. I thought he like wanted to take a picture with me, but he was like, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And so I like took my headphone out and I'm like, sorry? He was like, I'm gonna have to call the cops if you don't leave. I'm like, you can call the cops. Call the cops if you gotta. I paid $20 to work out here. And so I got my work in really quick, and then as I was leaving, I was Snapchatting my whole workout like normal. I got on my flight, and by the time I had landed, it was all over like ESPN and NewYorkPost.com. That's and so da -da -da. Funny. So it was pretty That's awesome. Good. It was pretty <laughs> funny. That's a gamer. This is a gamer? Put me in, coach. <laughs> Pretend. Fresh decoy, that never recognized me in there. Elliot's first time punting footballs, he's good. Flexibility is great. It's got long legs. His toe point was poor. Uh, didn't get a spiral. However, it was so bad that I don't think the returner was going to be able to catch it. Well, I guess that's what you get for punting the football in Manhattan. They kicked the football and now the game's over. Game's over. <laughs> you just lost it. Super Bowl ended. Just a couple of dudes headed to Planet Fitness right now. We're gonna work out with Weatherford, Armageddon style. We're trying to get huge beat season. It's coming up. Steve-O for the first time in a Planet Fitness since getting banned. Yeah. This is the first NFL jersey? My first NFL jersey. Uh, honored to wear it. Steve is totally <laughs> disguised right now. No one's gonna recognize him. You're not saying that. Elliot, I don't, <laughs> dude, I don't know if wearing a Weatherford jersey was a good disguise when I'm banned nationwide. You're not saying. <laughs> Living la vida Life loca. <laughs> You don't have any search on here? Nah, you got it, but it, it takes five more. Just so guys, y'all do me the favor. Just the camera can't be on the floor. If y'all wanna use y'all phones to okay. like take videos of what y'all working on, that's cool, but cameras? No camera. You'd probably right. do about a thousand curls oh, with just front. one arm. Okay. Get police in this bro. Yeah, I feel bad. <sighs> Were you filming that? Yeah, I was filming the whole thing.
It's Elliot's birthday. We're gonna leg press him for his birthday as an appreciation for how much we love him. Happy birthday, Elliot. I can't believe they didn't catch us. That's what I'm talking about, Steve-O. All right, this is it. steve going to try and get kicked out. Let's see what happens. Yeah. There's no try. Let's what did what you have to say? Do or do not. There is no try. That's it. Somewhat harassing us the entire time. I think this is going to take you over the top. I'm pretty sure he's going to get kicked out right now. So, right, so. so both point the cameras this way. Okay. Um, don't look at him, though, because they're going to see us that we're filming. So okay. just like try and be nonchalant with that one. So. Let's go, Steve. Ah. Let's go, Steve. Ah. 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 Bro, bro, bro. Bandless, you're on the planet Fitness Bandless, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. You fucking touch, bro. You motherfucker. Get the fuck out of here. Push me, push me. Hey, man, Jack. Get the fuck, man. Get the fuck. Let's go. 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 let us go let us go Sorry, 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 sorry. It was a joke, it was a joke. Let's go drink some margaritas. Let's do it. We got some weather for fans? Yeah, big weather for fans. Uh, weather for did a Snapchat from the gym. This guy came all the way from I don't know where to come say what's up. That's pretty cool. Literally just got kicked out. That was so awkward, but hilarious at the same time. All right, Steve was going to attempt to get this football that he put it up there. No shot. No shot. No shot. Not even close. Let me stand on your shoulders. <laughs> Football's up there. Oh my Tell goodness. me when I can stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we? This doesn't look good. Don't fall. That might fall. So be careful. Semi incriminating, but at least he's safe. Oh man, I'm a big fan, and I wouldn't. Oh, shit. Wow, Weatherford! Thank you for all that you do, and all the brothers. <laughs> Got the super rolling on. Look oh my God, that. you see me? I'm shaking. <laughs> Is that RT? Holy shit! Oh my god! Right? One, two, three, boom! Dude, Steve, I what's his name? It. Greg? Yeah, man, Greg is gonna be hating. Is, Gre is Greg NY? Greg, Steve Weatherford here, Super Bowl champion. I'm here with somebody you just might know. Happy birthday, dear Elliot! Thank you! Steve O! We did I, want it. You, I want you to sit closer to the camera so yeah. you look bigger. Than <laughs> yeah. Shoot the rest of the video God like, damn it, like Steve. this. Damn it, Steve. This is not bad though. <laughs> no, I'm really not that big. Yeah, you are. You are. I saw those abs. You took your shirt off, man. I must have caught a thousand times. You're looking real good today. Steve O and I. Went into Planet Fit. Was it 24 hour fit? It was Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness. This guy, he told you earlier, he got kicked out of there for grunting. Do you usually like grunt like that when you're working out? You do, right? I'm not a big grunter. I, I mean, I might make a little bit more audible noise yeah. than a normal person in the gym. <laughs> so, Steve has been a mentor of mine for like the last year and a half. And we met, we did a video together. I'll link it uh, in the description. But Steve was an NFL giant, uh, won the Super Bowl. What year was that? 2012. That was five, that was five years five ago. Five years. You've been out of the league for five years. No, I've been out of the league for one year. I won the Super Bowl. So, but five years ago. Was that was that Tyreek? Mm-mm. That was Tyreek. 2008, 2007, seven. eight, um, 2011, and 12 was Super Bowl 46, Indianapolis. Same team. Yes. Patriots. When did you get to the Giants? 2011. The year we won the Super Bowl yep. was my first no year way. there. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I went to two. AFC championship game. So I moved to New York. Yeah. Played for the Jets. 
2009 and 10, that was Rex Ryan's first year as the Jets head coach, mm -hmm. Mark Sanchez's first year. Wait, where'd year. you go to college? University of Illinois. Yeah, yeah that's right, that's right. So um, I went to two AFC championship games two years in a row. Then the, th the next year, I went to the NFC championship game, won it, went to the Super Bowl, boom, capped it off. Super Bowl, he's got the ring, you got the ring on you? The first time I met Steve, he lets me wear the Super Bowl ring. I was freaking out, a little bit nervous. I don't wear it on my hand. Hold on, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Thing, man. You can be closer. It's a nice piece of merch right there, man. Ooh, there it is, there it is. There it is, that looks good. To state my disclaimer, I usually don't bring this with me places. We're, sh we're shooting videos. I, I don't ever, I don't, put it this way, I don't ever wear it, um, but I do bring it places from time to time because, like today, when we were on the street, Yep. Uh, and the cop ran, stopped ran you. into, uh, well actually I stopped you him stopped initially. Cop, right. um, we ran into, we were walking by um, a Brooklyn NYPD and I just shook his hand. I wasn't going to be like, hey, I'm Steve Weatherford, but yeah. shook his hand just to tell him, hey, I appreciate you. And he was like, dude, I love you, man. I follow you on Snapchat. And it was really nice that I had my ring. That's so cool. Then at that point, like, he's a grown man, probably, what, 35? Yep. And he's, his hands started shaking. Yeah, it wasn't because he was like, of me. Trembling. No, it was, it was definitely because of you. No, it was because he didn't shake until the ring came out. Yeah, that's true. So that was really cool. And to be honest with you, like, it's really cool to have a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. But to me, it's like, and it sounds so cliche, but it's everything that it represented. Up into that up point, into that, yeah. the struggles. To I mean, get to dude, that you play football. I mean, yeah. we play essentially the same position. It's a lonely ass position, man. Sure. Um, when you do well, you know you get too much credit, and you're the greatest ever. And then when you make a mistake or you fail, you know you get too much credit for that as well. So it's. Uh, Did you feel a lot of pressure? Like I in college, I remember, and I was a field goal kicker, so I remember being I like puked before every single college. You game. did. Puked. Me too, man. Like five minutes before the game, like on the sideline, <sighs> really? right before the national anthem. <laughs> You yeah, know like, who else did that? Chris who? Snee. No way, Boston College. Yeah, dude, Chris Snee was, was a legend. Really? Legend. You know, Hall of Fame caliber player. Yep. And uh, two Super Bowl rings, like eight Pro Bowls, and him and I shared a puke bucket on the sideline right before the game. Before the games. <laughs> wow. I'm like, dude, scoot over. <laughs> uh, it wasn't anxiety, it was performance anxiety. Excited to, to start. Yeah, I think that was my problem in college, man. Like, I had a good first year, and then year two, and I came from like a high school of 50 people. When I started playing in front of Penn State, I just got so nervous before the games. It like, affected like affect my mechanics, and I, I missed sure. them. I was a head case, and I knew I was I was going out knowing I was going to miss a field goal, and it was the worst yeah. feeling in the world. Um, Good example of that, Alindo Mari. Remember him? Yep. Did one of the best field goal kickers of all time, mm -hmm. and um, we ended up trading for him when I played for the New Orleans Saints. And his first his first game in preseason. He hit the left upright on a on a kick, uh, obviously missed it. Hit the right upright on a kick, missed that one, and we ended up keeping him after final cuts. And he played like six games and mm -hmm. went like fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason being is because he like he lost his confidence, and I was his holder. So we'd go up to the head coach Sean Payton, and literally, I remember going out for a fifty-yard field goal in a dome, no wind, and Sean Payton's like, "Can you make it?" And Alindo was like. Yeah, I can make it. And Peyton was like, I don't believe you. You're just going to miss it. Just go ahead. That's the last thing you want to say to really? somebody before they go out to perform a skill. And and the way I, I say it is you never want to remind someone what they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And you never want to remind some someone what could happen if they're not successful in right. performing their skill. And that's for life in general. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to have a negative thought in your mind prior to going out and putting it on the line in any facet. It could be shooting a video, yeah. um, you know, in the line of work that you do, or it could be kicking in the Super Bowl for what I did, or it could be public speaking, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, don't ever feed your, your mind the thought of what you don't want to mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Because your mind has a funny way of You're just allowing making that negative that happen. Yeah. In, yeah. Dude, I think that's what makes you such a good Steve is like the nicest dude of all time. I'm always there to help if you have any Thanks, questions man. for him. Everybody loves this dude, it's just a genuinely like good dude. But I think like the most attractive trait about you, other than your abs, is you're like you're always positive. Like always. And is that something you carry with you in life like, all the time? Uh, honestly, I think that is if I could be known for anything like when I'm dead and gone, I wanna mm -hmm. be known as the person that uh, that brings a positive energy everywhere he goes. Could be a party, could be the library, could be, you know, just coming in here to HQ and like looking, um, you know, almost in awe of what you guys have built here. It's really freaking cool. And, and the coolest thing about it isn't 
what you guys are accomplishing here, but it's you, you took a risk on yourself by gambling on yourself, leaving like a safe, secure, um, you know, comfort zone yeah, finance yeah. and, and gambling on yourself because you were passionate about it. So you're passionate about it and you fed it and you got outside your comfort zone by trying to learn new skills and editing and all these other things. And now you've built the business around what you're passionate about. So if you can build a business around what you're passionate about, which is what I'm doing in the fitness industry, mm -hmm. I freaking love the fitness industry. I love finding more efficient, more effective ways of kind of unlocking my human potential. You know, the, the yield of that hard work that you invest into it is going to come back to you. You know, if you cheat on your diet and when people aren't around, you're eating things you shouldn't eat or you're, you know, Snapchatting from the gym, but you, you didn't put the workout in, your body is going to reflect that and your health is going to reflect that. Steve-O did a photo shoot. You guys got to see this. <clears throat> Butt freaking naked, man. Dude, I have to show you the other picture of me. They wanted me to go through like a punting motion. Probably like, uh, I don't know, wow. probably like 50. 50 times before, like my little nuts were. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing um, about being positive. I'm sure there's a lot of people on here, um, and I, I see them in the comments, like they're stuck at their job. And they're kind of scared to take that leap because one, they don't probably know that the hobby is, and two, they just don't know if they can take that risk. Like how do you, I was so nervous quitting my job, but like it was the time I was 30 years old, and I was mm -hmm. like, I need to do it. So maybe it was a timing thing. But like, how do you work up the courage to quit your job if you don't have money? Like, what you mean, like walk away from a three million dollar NFL contract to go full time fitness? Hey, there you go. There you go. There you go. I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> My wife was like, "Are you a yeah, Are you idiot? fucking nuts? <laughs> like that, um, dude? Look, that's a risk, man. I mean, but you know, the the one thing about me that I feel like makes me. I don't want to say one of the best in the world, but very, very unique mm -hmm. by comparison to other people in the world. Dude, I don't lose, man. You know what I mean? I don't freaking lose. And the reason I don't lose is I feel like there's two things you can do in life. You're either going to win, for me, you're either going to win or you're going to learn. Like if, if, if on paper it looks like a fail to someone else, if I learn something from that, it's kind of like the cliche quote by Thomas Edison. I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But um, for me, I've been successful at the majority of the things that I've pursued in my life. However, I have a very, very obsessive uh, personality. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're and, and my wife, yeah, 100%. Um, when I set goals for myself, yeah. and some of them seem like outlandish, but dude, when I was 14 years old and I had a dream and an aspiration of one day becoming a professional athlete, I had never even played football at the time, but that was my dream. I identified the vision for my life um, and but in order for me to at, by the time 10 years goes by at 24 to have the ability to one day Live that dream and become a professional basketball player or Olympian or football player or Whatever it is that I wanted to do I knew at 108 pounds a lot of things were gonna have to change in my life my lifestyle um, You know where I was investing my time because you can do two things with the most precious commodity that you have in your life mm -hmm. It's not your money. It's not your family it's your time. Mm -hmm. but I love you. I love Thank you too, man. Hey, but at the end of the day, he says that I've been a mentor of his. <sighs> if anything, dude, I've been a spiritual encourager. True. I've learned way more from you than you've learned from me. Stop it, Steve. Stop it. You guys got to follow this guy's channel. I'm going to link it below. Steve Weatherford, thank you so much. I love you, buddy. Love you too, man. Fuck yeah.